just want to read from uh, Isaiah 66, right? Isaiah 66 and um, a couple of verses there. First, maybe first two verses. It says, Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? Uh, where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. Okay. And finally he says, But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. Okay. So as we read these scriptures, um, the Lord is just you know, explaining about about physical structure. You know what we as human beings see on the outside. Uh, maybe uh, maybe a big um, big place. You know, and he's just contrasting, and especially in the light of what is happening, uh, what was happening yesterday, and what is happening, you know, in our country. The Lord is saying, you know, heaven is my throne. You know, I'm beyond any physical structure. Where is the place that you will, you know, build me? Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool, and uh, and he's saying, you know, where is the where is the house? Where is the place of my rest? And and all and he's saying, you know, all the things that you see, all the physical things, everything that you see, my hand creates, right? All nature and everything I I create, and the Lord is saying that on Him, who's poor and of a contrite spirit. Um, on that person will I look. So the Lord is, you know, man looks at, you know, the, the big structures, grander structures, you know, big monuments, etc. But the Lord is saying, um, it's uh, Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2, right? Okay. But the Lord is looking at the heart of the person. <clears throat> and it's like saying that I will inhabit the person who is of a contrite heart and one who trembles at my word right um so for the lord this is what is precious this is what is important that he makes man uh, his holy habitation right and thereby changing transforming and um, and making something beautiful of that of that person's life okay and he's saying one who is humble one who's of a contrite heart and contrite spirit, and one who trembles at my word, one who reveres God's word, one who honors God's word uh, to the point of you know literally you know awaiting and literally trembling at the word of God. Right. So he just he's just giving the priority. This is what is my priority, or this is what is important, precious in my eyes. Right. So uh, may the Lord give us discernment in such ways that um, you know that we will also consider the things that he considers, that we will also esteem as precious, uh, what he esteems as precious, that um, that we will not be swayed or moved by external things um, that contradict the word of God, right? that goes away from his point of view or his perspective, right? Um, so let's, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are you are awesome, you are greater, you are bigger, Lord, than anything that we could give credit for. We thank you that you are all-powerful, that you're all-knowing. God, we, we bless your name, God. We acknowledge, oh God, that you are the Lord, the all-powerful one, all-knowing one, and all-seeing, God, and nothing escapes your attention, God. And Lord, we thank you that you're so uh, amazing and you're so great, so awesome. And yet, Lord, uh, you come down to us, Lord. You reach out to us, Father God. And you are mindful of each one of us, O oh God. And nothing, Lord, escapes your attention, O oh God. Whatever things that we might be, Lord, experiencing, going through uh, struggles, challenges, Lord, everything, God, you are aware. And uh, and even as, Lord, you've said, O oh God, on this one, you will look, that you turn your attention, Lord, to each one of us, God. 
And so we, we give you praise and may we be found, O oh God, to be a people who, who honor you, Lord, who are, who are humble in your presence, God, and, and always and also, God, revering your word, O oh God, that may we be a people who tremble at your word, Master. May we esteem your word higher than anything else, Father God, to um, hear it, to receive it, and to obey, God, carefully, God. We thank you. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so we've been looking at uh, the um, uh, the Lord Jesus as an example of leadership, right? So you've got the notes. Uh, you've received. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we looked at. Um, uh, three things, right? Three or three of those points, or four maybe, um, that as the Lord served, <clears throat> um, so must we be. So we're looking at all these things that the Lord um, showed us as an example, so that we can learn and we can follow. Okay. Um, so let's look at the fifth one. Okay. So that as a leader, this whole aspect of sacrifice. Okay. So the Lord Jesus, as a leader. He was willing, ready, and he also sacrificed himself, right? So that was an example for us to follow. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies... And those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Okay. So he says, just describes that for whom are all things and by whom are all things. And we know that, you know, he was before all things, talking about Jesus, that uh, through him were all things made that was made. Right. Hebrews 5, verse 7 says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. So it talks about his earthly ministry or his walk on the earth and how he he, he talks about the Garden of Gethsemane and he offered a prayers and supplications with vehement tears in Christ. But he submitted and he was willingly ready to uh, let go of his own life and give his own life as a sacrifice. Right? As a sacrifice. And he suffered. Right? So as a leader, this was something that um, that he came prepared for the Lord. He knew that this was how it was going to be. And so he he was not, you know, he did not deviate from that. Right? He did not move away from that. Um, so what does it mean to sacrifice? You know, one aspect of sacrifice is to give up. You know, that's something that we are like we we are familiar with. Okay, sacrifices, okay, something that belongs to you or something that is rightfully yours. It could be it could be a material possession. It could be, you know, you have a right to it, right? Privilege, or maybe it's something of a comfort, whatever, right? So you have a right to it. You have a right to, let's say, live in a certain way. You have a, you have the means to live a certain way, right? But you willingly give that up for the sake of the life that you've, you know, you want to live. You willingly give it up for the sake of serving the others. And because you are a leader, you willingly give up. Okay, So that's one aspect of sacrifice. And the sacrifice which is, which is tied to leadership. Right? So which means you, you know, maybe we can talk about it. You know, what are some things that we might have to willingly give up, right, to be a leader? You know, you have a right to your, your time. And privacy, but then you give that up, maybe a little bit because you want to serve others, right? Um, and uh, maybe you have a right to, you know, your rest, maybe. But sometimes you 
give up a part of it so that you can serve others right so you willingly give up certain things so that you can serve as a leader okay now the other aspect of sacrifice is also to take on okay now that is something that uh, that we may not have considered right sacrifice you know it's it's always like letting go it's it's about death and you know giving up um but but sacrifice also means that you willingly take up certain things right you maybe you take up a responsibility you take up a task you take up some work um because you're a leader okay so so we we understand that hey, leadership comes with that comes with sacrifice okay um so as we are serving as leaders our calling as leaders um we might be called to sacrifice right give up certain things so you know it, it, i'm just thinking in a, in a in a small way maybe when you some of you were leaders at the short term bible college right i'm sure you you had to sacrifice certain things you know you could not go go on living your regular schedule or regular things that right? you might have wanted to yeah i just want to sit and listen to this music or sit and listen to this message or you know i just want to sleep for some time right but you had to willingly let go of that because of the responsibility right it's a, in a small way you know you you had to let go or you had to take up some responsibilities you know i need to get this done i need to maybe some, in terms of purchases in terms of whatever right uh, you know instructing people or you know looking after monitoring them whatever right so you saw you saw you experienced that right in a small way so similarly you know in christian leadership we see that this is uh, this is part of Uh, being a leader right to be able to sacrifice so it should not come as, as a su- surprise because the, the lord jesus himself set an example for us um you know that that a sacrificial living is something that we are called for okay um you know see the thing is uh, there are different levels of sacrifice and depends on the call whatever so there's no point in us comparing you know saying a hey, uh, you know anand comparing with prince and saying hey, but he is you know his level of sacrifice is uh, i don't know it's uh, you know it's less or more or it, there's no point in comparing because when we compare then it is uh, it's pointless you know when we compare so um like for example even if you look at uh, believers worldwide you know for some <clears throat> especially those who are you know I, we were hearing some testimonies of those who are living in uh, places like very very difficult places like afghanistan and so on um to be a believer to be a witness for christ uh, it's a high call it's a it involves a life of sacrifice you know to be able to worship to be able to read the word um it's it takes a lot right and there are some like even in our own churches uh you know we we hear them saying that for them to come to church it's a big sacrifice it's a big thing because they are not allowed it's they're not uh, you know permitted so they need to they need to you know work out something i know of some 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 girls who were living in 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 manglo who who had who took up additional work so that they can get out of the house at a earlier time so that they can finish that work you know either in the hospital where they were serving or where finish that and then come or some course so that they could finish and so they could come to church uh, after that and they could go so for them just attending church being part of church itself was a was a big sacrifice was a big thing that they had to take on okay now for some others that may not be the issue but it could be something else right so it doesn't matter we don't have to compare but we just need to know that okay in our call in our you know in, in the role and responsibility that the lord has placed us as a leader there will be sacrifice okay so we we do we don't have to oppose that we don't have to be surprised by it but we just need to understand that yes the lord set as an example for us to live a life of sacrifice as leaders right okay the next one is 
to be an example now as a leader um we are um in a sense we are called to live our life itself to be a pattern for others to follow okay the lord jesus set an example like we read about in john chapter 13 we read about the fact that he 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 you know in in a way he just explained uh how he had come to serve and how the disciples ought to serve one another as leaders and so he washed everybody's feet and he said you know you need to do the same thing for i have given you an example okay so that word example it just means a pattern for others to follow that others can observe that others can learn about and others can follow okay so he says i have given you an example that you should do as i have done to you okay so our life <clears throat> as leaders needs to be an example that others can follow okay because in our life you know there will be like uh, you know instructions as leaders there will be instructions there will be you know certain things that we need to instruct command and etc but never forget that our life is an example for others to follow you know our values our decisions our lifestyle words we speak the the things that we do how we live our life it is an example for others to follow okay so that doesn't mean that uh, you know you always go around thinking okay now people are watching people are watching how do i live you know maybe uh, am i doing the right thing no the thing is that you change your life you know, it should just flow out right so it's not that i i mean fear or oh, i'm being observed so i need to behave in a certain way i need to do a certain way no the thing is that you know let the life of christ in you completely change you transform you so we we are aligning ourselves to the word of god and we are led by the spirit so we are totally liberated and free to live this kind of life aware being aware that we are examples okay um so the lord spoke about persecution and uh, again he said that you know this will happen to you right if the world hated you look 15 if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you are of the world the world will love its own yet because you are not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you and so on and he says if they persecuted me they will persecute it, persecute you also um, if they kept my word they will keep yours also and so so his uh the lord was making it very clear you know even though people persecute even though people reject you continue to be an example right you continue to be a pattern of life that others can follow and and scripture also talks about you know the fact that um when you live your life that your life um more than you know of course your words and everything but your life will be an example so that those who persecute or those who accuse you will be put to shame right by your good works they will be put to shame okay and uh, the other words that uh, we, that we see is in uh, um where paul writes to timothy and he says uh maybe in first timothy <clears throat> uh for and verse 12 like he he writes about what are those areas in which you can be an example right first timothy 4 verse 12 let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers and he talks about all those areas in word and conduct in love and spirit in faith in purity okay so in all these areas that we can be examples as leaders okay right then um the last one here is that as leaders you know we are called to trust um the team or you know trust the core people whom you are leading whom whom you are giving leadership to right um the lord jesus again as an example right the lord jesus appointed sent the 12 he sent the 70 others right uh he appointed them he sent them okay so he spent time with them he taught them he instructed them these were people with whom he had conversations 
uh, these were people to whom he explained the parables right and uh, they went they did amazing things in the in his name and so they came back you know if you look 10 19 i think they, they uh, the lord gives them the authority they came back with good reports saying lord at your name you know even the demons are subject we we saw uh, that the demons just leave. So at your name, in your name, you know, they, they left and so on. So they recognized the power of Jesus' name. They used uh, the name of Jesus as they prayed and commanded the evil spirits to leave. So they saw all that. That was the experience, right? Yet, <clears throat> when it came to uh, the Lord being persecuted, they all left, right? No one was around. They all left. And around the cross also we see John, the mother of uh, the Lord, and and a few others. But the others had actually left. Okay, And we also read about Peter. Peter denied the Lord three times and, uh, and vehemently and in ways that you would think, okay, maybe this man doesn't even, didn't even know the Lord, you know, the way he was vehemently denying and saying, I, I don't know Jesus. Okay. And, but he had great potential, you know, Peter, uh, the Lord is, you know, is not there. And then they're all sitting around and then they say, he says, you know, I'm going fishing. And everybody else says, okay, I will also come. Then they all go fishing, right? So uh, he's, he's, still a, he's still a great leader. But the fact is that the Lord forgave and restored and also gave him that responsibility okay so which is i don't know for, for the human reason and logic it seems you know why would anyone do that and how can someone do that how can someone entrust that huge responsibility of the kingdom of god to such a person right but obviously the lord saw beyond what anyone any human being could see he saw beyond their failings or limitations and he saw their heart okay um obviously the lord saw that and so we see something very courageous that he does he forgives he encourages and he restores right so this also we see as an example okay which means that as we lead there will be moments when you know maybe you know, the kind of trust that we are placed on people is broken. So I want to ask, you know, is it easy building trust or rebuilding trust? It's difficult, right? Once trust is broken, uh, you know, every time you are guessing, you know, is that person saying the right thing? Is that person saying because they want me to hear it? Will the person do it? They're saying they will do it, but will they actually do it? Right? So you're, you're always thinking about that. So trust, rebuilding trust especially, takes a long time to rebuild, right? Bring it back, bring it back and to heal and so on. But the Lord did that. Right? The Lord did that. Lord, Lord entrusted them. The Lord, uh, again, gave back that responsibility. And let's... Uh, if you read John 21, you know, we see that, right? John 21, verse 15. <clears throat> so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Uh, he said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He then said to him, tend my sheep. And the third time, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Okay. So we see this whole restoration of the task. And uh, and the Lord encouraging him, and uh, uh, and really you know his heart being reconciled, uh, and the Lord doing that. 
so um so as leaders you know we will face this this will be a reality okay so so for us to and it will take a lot out of us you know for us to trust the lord for us to draw on his strength right and for us personally to receive healing wholeness and also to extend that forgiveness and trust to others okay so that it will definitely be something that we will face and it's something that we need to do as leaders okay so any questions we looked at just three <clears throat> any questions here anything that you might want to add um online students anything nothing at all okay okay so just want to add some things here you know when yeah okay regarding trust the example of peter stands to us in spite of who he was jesus chose and trusted built him up but the not the case with judas when we see others especially while building them up when we face a situation how do we see others when they break trust and move further in building them up just like the lord okay so um okay so what if you see the you know difference of course Judas, Judas was not around he took his own life and uh, and that was it so there was no opportunity to further you know restore or uh, restore him so we see that uh, in Judas life so um when we see others when they break trust um your question is um how do we how do we see others and move further in building them up okay so it it of course you know it requires the response of the other person to whom we are extending trust right to whom we are trusting so are they repentant and are they willing to work work at or work at their life you know which was the case with peter so the lord asked him that question you know do you love me he says yes and then the lord says okay feed my sheep right and so it's a it's a question of you know willingness on the other person's part it's not like we cannot force ourselves to or force that person into getting back to where they are you know it, it needs it's actually um, the other person's will other person's decision and choice so we extend forgiveness we extend trust right but is the other person willing to receive that forgiveness and is the other person by by way of virtue of us extending the trust is the per other person willing to work at their lives in order to get back to um, to living you know a trustworthy life so that's the thing um so from so from our part we we extend what we need to extend from in the sense we 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 love we forgive we honor but we need to see that willingness in order to let's say for in terms of responsibility and task and so on we need to we need to see that willingness and we need to see that effort to be able to entrust those tasks entrust those projects or entrust whatever um um you know trust we want to rebuild we, we need to be able to see that and uh, and then do it yeah hope that helps um, check in pastor yeah i understand i understand what you're saying pastor that, that... Um, i think somebody's saying something um sorry did we i didn't get anything pastor can you hear me now yeah yeah so uh, i understand what you're saying pastor but uh, while uh, we pray for others especially god has 
put a burden within us maybe it's our relatives or our friends whom we have uh, who we are praying for their salvation and growth in the lord and uh, we don't see that change in them even in spite of maybe we we'll, uh, advise them or counsel them as in how the lord leads so uh, in our heart should we keep on praying for them or or is there a point in time that we give up on them okay god I, i'm not able to invest in their lives like is that is there a point there or it's a personal thing pastor yeah so the example that we have is that uh, our and scripture also says that so when, when it comes to saving or salvation or even transformation of life that he is able to save to the uttermost which means that because the lord does not give up we also don't you know we don't give up on them or just write them off as you know this is a gone case uh, so we don't give up on them we continue to you know pray for them that they will change and and of course we know that it is their decision right it is their choice but we can continue to uphold them in prayer you know that's the least that we can do and um, you know i know depending on our relationship with them in the in, in the sense like you know if it is a if it is a formal friendship i mean formal work kind of a relationship or maybe it's a friendship kind of a um you know relationship or maybe it's a spouse you know these things differ right um and so it becomes a little more difficult um to to keep on extending and we need the grace of god for that right um so so that's that's the reality but the fact is that we can continue to extend grace we can continue to extend forgiveness and uh, we don't have to write people off yeah that's it okay um okay just a few comments on uh, you know being as as a servant right um as a leader mm-hmm. and uh, we need to we just need to understand it correctly because sometimes you know we uh, i don't know this whole thing of serving uh, we sometimes do it uh, to the point of really letting go of the role to which we have been called as a leader so we need to do it right you know at the fourth point we saw that the lord served you know he, he himself said i came to serve and not to be served unto right to receive uh, this you know service from or honor from man so he came to serve but at the same time you would see his life in ministry that he went about doing what he was called to do like he taught he preached he instructed and then in, you know in in some cases you know the disciples he would he would tell them he would rebuke them he would correct them he did all that right but in all this he was serving okay so which means that uh, sometimes we think okay maybe you have been appointed as a leader maybe a leader over a team or leader over an organ or or a particular organization we have responsibilities then we think that okay if i need to serve then i need to let go of this leadership let go of this thing you know sometimes so we think that okay i i should not instruct them anymore because i'm serving right i should not uh, correct them anymore because actually i'm you know i'm serving so we sometimes we think in those ways right i uh, let go of our leadership or let go or compromise on the role and the responsibility that we have called to do right so we need to be careful you know we, we our heart is a heart where we are saying okay my heart is i want to serve these people our this uh, whoever the lord has appointed me as an overseer i want to serve at the same time i need to fulfill that responsibility to which he has called you know whatever it requ- what is it required if it needs leading if it needs correcting if it needs you know uh, appointing and all that instructing i do it to the full ability with the heart of a servant right so just wanted to uh, state that okay, you have a question pastor uh, one more thing like uh, uh, being servants uh, like some of the people some of the pastors will disciple some junior pastors so uh, what is the level that we can go under their leadership so this 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 uh, serving is uh, 
commander everything like to serve the pastor also whatever he says and his personal works is that uh, we we can take it as a learning or how, how much we can go in that perspective you know as a as a as, as a, a leader as a servant as a servant okay the other side okay how much can we do see you um, the thing is okay um, you want to do it willingly and it's not really commanded of you right like you for example you were talking about some personal work doing some personal work buying some vegetables buying you know getting this done etc so you know, as, as long as that's not you know you are not commanded manipulated to do it saying you know you you are my disciples therefore you need to do all this uh, i think it's fine you know out of your own free will out of your heart you want to do it you want to serve in the other it's fine but if it's if it becomes something like a controlling thing we don't see it in the life of jesus right he doesn't do that um so so we need to ask ourselves you know do i need to do this uh, yeah i'm i'm respecting honoring and all that but then you know is this is this, is has this crossed that boundary has this crossed that line of free will and is it become a control is it become something like a manipulation uh, then we need to be careful <laughs> yeah so and so uh, uh, as a leader if you see the other side that also we need to be careful you know am i um you know just using them as you know am i really serving them or am i using them to serve me in you know, all these things we need to be really careful yeah the thing is also the sixth point leader be an example so uh, uh if, if he is a leader or uh, he is a pastor also every he is a human being only everyone have their uh, own weaknesses so uh, if 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 someone is pointing out uh, of on our weaknesses like how much how much uh, how much extent we have to be an example in in all the things like there will be some weaknesses for us also that that doesn't mean they should not they should point at each and everything what we are doing our personal works or any personal business or character in few things mm. and it should not affect we as our as our own self right yeah so the thing is uh, let's say somebody gives a feedback and then or a review or something and then they say that you know they point out you know pastor this is like this it should be changed or this is, needs to be corrected and and you see you check you know is it valid is it really first of all is it true okay because um, <clears throat> sometimes it can be an assumption on the other person it can be a you know uh, whatever you know it could be their own their own mind that they like for example i'll tell you once one morning i i walked into church and then um i think something was on my mind so i i just went and i believe this person wished me i did not wish okay so i i just went i just uh, i think I, we were late or something this happened many years ago and so um, so this person i i noticed that during the you know you look at everyone and then you're seeing and then this person's face was a little different you know he's normally a very friendly person who's very receptive and he was very you know you look away every time you look at him you look away so you know something was so i after the service i asked him you know like is everything okay uh, you were a little disturbed preoccupied then he said uh, yeah you know when you walked in i wished you good morning and you, you just you didn't even say anything so yeah, so you know so then um, and i apologized i corrected myself but the thing is that um, yeah, that's a valid thing right so it, it's not that you wanted to dishonor them in any way and you intentionally but it was a mistake a genuine mistake uh, but you didn't you didn't see it and your mind was thinking of something else so these things happen so people point out and say and then we willingly receive it and we say okay i'll you know i'll change i'll correct and uh, and this kind of thing is good but then <clears throat> some people might also you know just want to poke holes <laughs> just say you know you should not have done i and i also remember one person saying and 
you know you while praying for i think i was leading worship and i said pray for this pray for that and i and i was listing around different different languages in different states okay it was just end of a worship time so i was just saying you know let's pray for uh, this uh, i think we were singing some song about the nation so that person was very upset you didn't you didn't say pray for karnataka you know you're living in karnataka you're staying in this thing and you're ministering here you didn't say you know. then uh, you know i think you have a bias about you know that kind of, that kind of thing so you just take it you know you take it with a pinch of salt okay it's a it's a mistake oversight i didn't even realize what, how many ever languages i listed how many ever states i listed i didn't even realize but then this person obviously noted and said this so uh, sometimes people might i don't know because of their own insecurities because of their own hurts they might say so you just make that distinction and uh, just go with it yeah you just need to be discerning and mm, yeah that's all we can say okay okay um so we, we still have some more time so let, let's um, let's just kind of um, change a bit so that that is what we saw about um, the the life of the lord jesus life and ministry of the lord jesus and how he was an example you know all these seven things so we can um, we can also do the same thing right so um <clears throat> you know in in we looking at these examples we saw that um, he was very clear about his purpose right for this purpose i had come so he would not be deviated from the purpose irrespective of the difficulty of the environment or the situation right D despite the pain despite the difficulty of the situation he would not be discouraged he would not be distracted be very focused because he knew this was the purpose and so you know we're just going to talk about this word vision okay it's different from visions and dreams something that we you know supernaturally see uh, by the work of the holy spirit you're looking at vision being something that is uh, um that that communicates purpose okay so a vision statement okay so you all know the ministry the vision of uh, apc as a church and ministry right so what is that vision we in salt and light is uh, one part of it <clears throat> come on <laughs> okay let's uh, okay online folks also you can actually list down uh, what is the vision of the... <laughs> so i think during the announcements <laughs> we all switch off okay uh, when we watch the service um, anyone wants to take a online you can post it and let's see if we get it complete so no checking okay online <laughs> students sound is checking <laughs> okay okay so vision of all people church is to be salt and light in the city of bangalore and and a voice to the nation and to the nations okay so that's the full huh or what <laughs> excuse me so that's the vision so <clears throat> what does it tell you the vision let's just analyze it salt and light to the city of bangalore voice to the nation and to the nations okay so what does it um, when you read that what does it tell you <clears throat> what do you get from it what do you understand from it about the church about the ministry what does it tell you <laughs> that we should be an example first in bangalore like how you are going to live our li not li life but church mm. and to others all over the world uh, that we as in the church okay as a church community the church community okay okay 
Francis. We'll, we'll just pass the mic. Um, <clears throat> so there is a mainly two things: light and salt. Salt and light, yeah. yeah. It is like showing the light from the darkness and salt. It's a taste of the Jesus to the city of Bangu and to the nation, uh, the India and the all the world. Okay, okay. Right, Nikhil. Nikhil, Nikhil, say. Okay. What do you understand from that statement? <clears throat> what, like about the statement itself? Okay, that's one part of it. What else? Um, like. As Nina Chechi said, like first uh, for this Bangalore, and after that be an example for this world also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Prince. <clears throat> like just communicating what it will do. Like what is the purpose of the church is to be a flavor and also you know to guide and show. Mm -hmm. To the place that ba Bangalore at the first, and also uh, mm -hmm. to speak to nations and also to nations. Okay, so communicating what we will do, uh, what the purpose. Okay, Sri mm -hmm. It's like um, APC. What APC stands for? Mm -hmm. The purpose. The as a community, as a team, all the believers from APC. Their vision, their purpose is like they will reach out to the people, to the nation, to the nations, to the Bangalore. Okay. So what the church will do. Yeah. Okay. Anand, you saw it online, so you tell. A <laughs> little more depth. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, being sad and like Jesus, Jesus spoke about that. And, I mean, uh, ABC is the main purpose is to be a salt and light like the he, 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 apc want to show the path and 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 it want to extend its influence over all the band city hmm. and being as a voice uh, spirit as a spiritual community as a christian or as a all people church and to be that to, to extend that influence to all the nations Right. Like how to like how the spirit filled word focus. Yeah. Mm, right. So um so yeah, thank you. So everyone, uh, I think I see um Jackin's response. We are called to live as examples, a testimony, yeah, and do what Lord urges us to do. Uh, great change agents, influence Bangalore with the right. So yeah, so that is the okay, description of the vision. Um and I think we got a couple of responses where, you know, just saying that, okay, this vision, which means this is something that is the big picture of all the services, all the conferences, all the youth events, all the everything that we are doing, you know, this is the big picture that we are aiming at. That is what a vision is. This is the big picture. Right. In all that we're doing, right, in all the rostering, scheduling, planning, you know, all these events where we are spending the money and you know, all those LEDs and everything, you know, this is the big picture. This is where, where we are going. And this is what, who we are, want, who we want to be. To be salt, meaning that we will be an influence. To be light, meaning that we will have impact in our city. First of all, wherever you know geographically, you know we are placed there as a church, as the body of Christ. So where we are, and the nation, and to be a voice to the nation. So which means a voice of truth, voice of hope, voice carrying the message of the gospel of Jesus, right? Gospel of the kingdom to the nation and to the nations, right? But this is the big picture. This is where what we are aiming for as a church. So that's why you said um, you said purpose, and what did you say, Sri Radha? This is what we want to do. Right? So all our doing, all our being, everything comes because of that. Okay, so that's the purpose. So which means that that defines who we are called to be as a church. Right? In everything, in our planning, scheduling, everything. This this is the 
big picture this is the target okay so we know that okay we are going in one direction you don't have to deviate from that okay okay so we'll stop here and then um, we'll talk more about it next class thank you